तस भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मास नमो तस भगवत अर्हत सम्मास नमो तस भगवत अर्हत सम्मास होमेस्ट द फुली एन लाइक बुद्ध डियर फ्रेंड्स इन दम Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to share some uh, thoughts about Buddha's teaching with uh, all the friends who are listening to me from uh, different part of the world. So today we are discussing uh, about the decision making. or perhaps we can say judgments in our day to day life we make many decisions regarding our lives regarding our lives and also sometimes we have to help other people to get some sound reasonable and useful decisions so some people think when uh, you are not making decision and you give you delegate you want to somebody to decide for you it is also still a decision right so we in our life it is unavoidable that uh, we we cannot avoid taking decisions we have to take decisions whether we like or not so in buddha in tripitaka uh, generally the how people make decision is described uh, according to few aspects buddha has explained few aspects uh, in pali we call pramana or vinicca Vinicca means uh, like making judgment, taking decisions. Pramana means like measuring. So to draw draw a conclusion, to make a decision about something, we call vinicca or take a decision. So according to the Buddha, the people in the world makes decisions on four ways. Basically, uh, according to the outward appearance. you know when we see people we guess we decide or oh, we have so many bias and prejudice prejudices regarding okay these people are belong to this country or these people are doing this or these people may be a drug addict or whatever we take decisions based on uh, the appearance in the world now we try to respect and also consider if person is using a very rich car or they have a lot of nice clothes and nice shoes we think they are a really gentleman right so this is a kind of a, in a way we can be you know get cheated or get uh, misguided by the appearance because uh, the people can act so nicely and uh, try to uh, make a impression on you that is a nice quiet kind gentleman but in their heart they may not be so so buddha does not uh encourage taking decision based on outward appearance once buddha was uh, living in a monastery and uh, with the with a discussion with a famous king i think king pasena dikosol and there were six 
groups of uh, people going pass in the monastery and tell uh, the king uh, turn towards these uh, six uh, persons so and worship them these uh, holy people and say loudly i am the king of such and such country and uh, then another group came like that likewise there were six uh, group of different different religious sages or religious teachers they went in groups so then the uh, he said the king said to the buddha they must be very pious virtuous and very good uh, shramanas or very good uh, priest or very good uh, religious people then buddha said no 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 you should not decide whether he is a religious person or good person just by mere appearance don't uh, take such deep understanding uh deep understanding or take very deep uh, clarification in your mind thinking that okay this person must be a very you know so buddha said the virtue of a person can be known through association not through just mere meeting one time and have a great impression it's not the way to understand person so the the judgment we make based on appearance sometimes may be correct sometimes may be may not be correct so it is uh, very important to uh, decide based on facts the second uh, judgment we are making uh, in our lives according to the opinions of others this is called uh, the gosappama you know when we hear in the news when we hear in the media when we hear from our neighbors when we hear from our friends okay that person is uh, very bad or that person is very cruel that person is not nice what we do is we agree with them and we try to put those ideas into our mind and uh, we try to see them through the our friends eyes not through our real eyes we try to understand that person through the information we receive from the society so sometimes uh, people uh, create uh, unnecessary stories and create uh, very false accusations and sometimes even ruin the li- lives of others so it's not good just to believe we must be open minded we must be ready to investigate is this true or is this not true so it is really important for us to uh understand and in have a th- thoroughly investigate what is going on and have a clear picture so the third way people take opinions or take uh, uh judgments is uh, according to the status the economic social status you know in sanskrit uh, there was a sanskrit uh, verse in a in sanskrit literature it says that uh, if a person is really rich the normally the people will praise him he is the most virtuous person he is the most the beautiful person he is the most able person he is so so and and so forth why because he got a lot of money people in order to gain uh, profits in order to gain some gains from him what they do they praise him. so maybe they are really good people and also merely because they are rich uh, because they are economic status and sometimes you see some poor fellow and you think uh, he is just useless fellow and you no know, nice 
once a great king had a problem he doesn't have any inheritance because he didn't have sons and daughters so he was he, he was a very intelligent king and he wanted to find a right suitable kind hearted person in order to give his throne so he sent some messages all over the country i am inviting i am inviting to give my heir to the throne anyone interested in please come in and have a interview so all the people in the country young people came to see the king and have some interviews and there was a one a very poor guy in a village and he can, he 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 also want to give it a try whether he can be the heir to the throne so but he didn't have you know nice clothes he he was so poor and he worked hard maybe few months and uh, collect some money and buy some new clothes and he started journey from his village to the the kin- kingdom or the king's court is a long journey he travel many days and uh, reach near near to the city that time it was a cold night it's a winter time and when he was coming in the evening one uh, beggar was lying down near the road on a under a tree and he was asking hello sir can you give me some uh, clothes i am so cold i am very old i cannot bear up this uh, the cool climate so the young man he 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 have he, he had the idea that i want to see the king so i must wear the nice clothes but uh, unfortunately he didn't think about himself he gave his clothes to this old man and came uh, next day he wanted to go to the palace but he didn't have a proper clothes he has all ragged clothes but nonetheless he decided okay if i am suitable it so it must be okay then he went to the palace and uh, the king ushered him and uh, then the young man realized that there are some physical similarities with the king and the uh, this beggar he saw then he asked sir were you the man i met you on the way then the king said yes i was the man you met me last evening then this young man asked why did you do this to me then the king said i was looking for a person who is very kind hearted who is very nice so i need somebody who is really uh, concerned about the citizen of the country so the citizen of the kingdom therefore i was looking for a right guy so i decided that you are the right person so based on your clothes based on your economic status we should not make judgment then the fourth the most important buddhist way of making decision is the making decision according to the reality we know we have fantasies we have some uh, imaginations we uh, think uh, in a different we are living in a like a mental world so we have different ideas uh, about our perception so this very interesting uh, situation we need to develop two sets of uh, mindsets in order to uh, have good good judgment 
how can we develop these two kinds of uh, two sets of uh, mindsets one is called the mind of a soldier you i i, I would like you to imagine if you are a soldier battling for your country or battling for your government what will happens you don't consider whether it is kind or nice whether it is good or bad what what is your purpose and what is your duty is to depend when you want to depend you don't uh, follow the rules of human rights or any other acceptable social norms right you do in order to depend your country right so similarly when you are trying to depend your country you forget all the policies good things in order to protect your country so when you like some opinion when you like one one side when you like one uh, team or when you like one political party so what you no matter how bad they are no matter how nasty they are because you like it you decide to favor them uh, and uh, depend them this is the when we are taking decisions sometimes most of the people in the society are having this uh, defensive mindset like a soldier the second mindset is the scout mindset this is very interesting uh, thing for us to develop because the scout uh, mindset you know a scout is the person who is going out to find the reality find the finding the what is really there what is the accurate position so so for example if a scout is uh, going in a deep forest and he has lost so he doesn't feel upset he doesn't feel uh, worry might he might be a little bit worry but he won't get upset what he do he might climb to a very high tree or very big high mountain or rock then he will search around what is there is there a river is there some place to drink water is there some city or village nearby so he will see the whole picture not a part of it so he he try to search whole area try to discover and explore what is really there accurately and correctly so he don't feel ashamed of if he make a mistake on the way to find the, the correct path to the city so in our life if we are ready to accept what is uh, really if we make mistakes if we make wrong judgment if we make wrong uh, understanding we must be ready to accept in any moment if it is a mistake okay i have done a mistake i have done a wrong thing so it's it's okay for us to correct ourselves from our wrong judgment then another uh, difficulty when we are making decision is the the prejudices we have i have traveled to uh, many countries so i have seen okay when i was uh, traveling in a, a flight from uh, dubai to somewhere i saw the some you know non buddhist people in living in the middle east i saw sometimes i'm i very like some uh, little children so one little children was interested on uh, me because my attire my clothes my robes is different they never seen them so, seen a person like me then the that mother of that child like threaten me to not to even to see that child because the kind of prejudices they have 
about maybe the religious other religious persons or other religious leaders they may have like hostile and uh, kind of uh, non tolerant prejudices so prejudice is uh, something a premature judgment premature means you don't consider all the facts all the sides good bad right wrong everything you don't consider just uh, you think okay they are bad people because they are chinese or they are japanese because they are so because of uh, their sexuality or because of uh, their age or whatever minority so depending on uh, their race they this kind of prejudices are there i'd like to explain this in a very pathetic incident that was happened during the first world war in france in france there was a soldier in the french army called uh, albert uh, this albert uh, was a jewish soldier you know the jewish people are one of the clever people in this world in this world they have invented so much scientific things and they are clever at business they are clever at whatever field they they are most of them are really clever people so those days in germany in france uh, there was a, a movement call or kind of a jealousy or kind of a anger towards Jew jewish people because they are so clever and uh, doing business very well so this is called anti semantic <laughs> ideas so one day one uh, military officer was taking a garbage uh, you know dustbin he was clearing the dustbin he found a piece of paper and this piece of paper was torn into several pieces and this this uh, military officer rebuilt this whole piece of paper and read what he found is it was a military secret was selling french military secrets were selling to german side so they were searching who is the culprit who is the person doing this kind of uh, things so they think in their barrack in their battalion there was only one jewish person they suspect this mr uh, albert so they make a investigation they went to see their his teacher and ask about his former life how how we study they they say uh, mr albert hypers was very clever at languages and he had a good memory and then the military went to his uh, room room in the barrack and they check there was nothing then the the military officers think oh, he is very clever he is very sneaky so he might hiding his information so they had a, some kind of investigation in the military and he was uh, decided it was decided that he is guilty of disloyalty to the french army what was the result he was to degraded or demoted from the army and he will be sent to some uh, very remote island in usa and the case case was closed and he was decided guilty but these all these uh, prejudices came because there was some other person in the same army barrack his handwriting was also quite similar similar than this uh, albert handwriting but uh, they were not uh, they didn't uh, interested in and uh, they didn't consider this fact and then uh, mr albert uh, uh, tried to write to the french government continuously please open up my case i am innocent i am not guilty and i never provide the military secrets or military information to the german side but a uh, few years pass but one uh, french uh, colonel called pecat he thought how oh, 
was if, if he was uh, wrong, is innocent. So he be, he began to investigate this incident deeply, and he found out that uh, still the military secrets are going to the German side. And uh, the handwritings, he found some handwritings and up to 10 years, Mr. Connell Packard were able to establish clearly that Mr. Albert was uh, innocent. He hasn't committed any disloyalty or he didn't provide any military secret to the German side. What is interesting in this story, even though Mr. Uh, Colonel Packard was really, he also anti-Semitic, he is against Jews, but he had this open-minded, the, the generous and genuine, genuine intention for him to open up uh, the investigation again and find the truth. So if you are making judgments about your spouse, about your friends, uh, it's good for us to have a good investigation, uh, not to have a like very slight and light based on hearsay evidence, based on uh, some uh, nonsense. We should not uh, be very quick to take decisions. Would they say the haste decision, you know, very quick decisions or judgments are not suitable for a wise, intelligent people like you? <laughs> so, you know, the in Buddhist we have sadda, right? Normally, when when uh, people see monks and temples, they have pain. You know, during the time of the Buddha, there was a one uh, devotee who was very interested in some monks and he invited uh, him to give a dana at home. And he was uh, uh, invited the monk and he, he was bringing this monk to his home. On the way, you know, there were some paddy fields, small canals, waterways. And the monk was, uh, when he was going with this monk, the monk was jumping over the, these uh, waterways and canal, little, little canals. Then the devotee th thought, okay, he he's no, should not be around. He should not be an enlightened person. He is a very, not so disciplined. <laughs> so I will give him only the food. I do, I'm not going to offer robes or any other requisites because I have invited him. I will give him some robes, no, nothing else. Then on the same way, there was a very little uh, water puddle, you know, just uh, some water on the road. In this case, the monk did not jump over the water. He just walked over the water. Then uh, the, the devotee was thinking, Hmm? How come? When there was a small waterways, he jumped over it. He is a quite bigger one. He could have, he must have to avoid this uh, muddy water. He should have jumped over it, but he didn't do it. Then the monk said to him, if, if I jump over the, this water, I will not get my meals even, <laughs> right? So people very quickly, because we have stereotypes in our mind. We have, okay, this person is like this, that person is like this. So we have these stereotypes in our mind. So we think, okay, uh, because of these stereotypes, if, we, if that image in your mind change, you thoroughly disappointed, you thoroughly upset. So it is important for us to have, uh, you know, avoid this kind of stereotype bias and prejudices uh, in our uh, social life, in our cultural life. So it is uh, then the very important uh, factors Buddha has uh, emphasized 
uh, when we are taking uh, or making decisions. One uh, important uh, thing is there are four agati, you know, there are four prejudices that we should uh, avoid. These prejudices are called uh, these are called agati. Agati is uh, like biases or wrong causes, prejudices. First is the chanda. Buddha says chanda. Chanda means uh, a likeness or you desire it. You know, like favoritism. If you are going to study law, if you are going to become a judge, these are very important Buddhist concepts that we need, we need to remember, right? The chanda is, uh, you know, because you like that person, you don't consider the facts. Uh, or you like this topic, you give so much uh, benefits or you must give so much uh, marks because you like it. So this kind of uh, prejudice is not good. Then the hatred. If you have uh, anger towards your friends or towards your um, family member or your neighbor, when you are taking decisions, you are not taking decision in a very balanced and nice and fine way. You are going to uh, make this uh, decisions based on your anger, based on your hatred. So we need to avoid this poor agati, this uh, uh, fear, uh, the, the hatred. Then the fourth, third agati is the prejudice, is called moha, ignorance. The delusion. You know, one uh, there's a one Sri Lankan song about uh, uh, singing a song. A, a, a famous singer sings a song, and in that song, he questions. You know, he was when he was coming to his home. There is some uh, shoe marks on the home because this his home don't have concrete pavements. No, just soil. He can see the footprint of the shoe on his uh, compound. Then he asks, who, who came to my home when I am away? He, he is suspecting her wife. He thinks some, some men has come to the house or something like that. Then the little boy in the home, his own son, maybe three years old, Oh yes, he's wearing the father's own shoes and has walked over the compound. But the, because of his ignorance, because of his uh, delusion, not understanding the real situation, he thinks somebody has uh, come to the house. So then the, the post is the very important uh, agati. It's very important agati. Uh, Buddha has explained. This is called the fear. So when we take judgments, when we take decisions, it causes a lot of problems because of fear. You know, when, when we have fear, okay, if I do this, if I get wrong, if people get uh, think about bad about me, so these kinds of fear. And the, another fear is the fear of outcome, you know. Okay, I do this, something goes wrong, and I will have to suffer these things. So these fears, unnecessary fears, will become a hurdle, become an obstacle for you to walk on your path. It's like a very big hurdle. You cannot cross over. It's like become a like Chinese Great Wall. So big, so 
obstructing your path. So this uh, fear about the bad results or good results or mixed results, we don't know. You know, life, it's not certain. Did you imagine that about uh, maybe one and a half years ago, we will have a corona and we have to stuck in, the, in our houses and we cannot go anywhere? Did you expect this kind of things? How would you expect? All world has to stuck in their houses and stay and do very boring life. Nothing fun, <laughs> no enjoyment, no work. Some, some people losing jobs. So it's life is all about this uncertainty. So when you are taking decision, don't fear. Have the gut feeling. Have the courage to move forward and give it a good try and do it and see and accept and ready to accept whatever coming on your way, no matter it's good or bad. So Buddha says there are four uh, kinds of fear. Some fears actually not bad, you know, fear itself is not bad. In some fears bad, some fears good. That's what we, we can explain according to the Buddha's teaching. You know, one is fear of uh, oneself, you know. That is, uh, you have a fear of losing your self-esteem. You know, everybody likes self-respect, self-dignity. So you, okay, if I do this, people will blame, My myself will blame, you know, your own heart will say you, okay, you are not a good person, you are doing bad things. Your heart will accuse you, your own bad deeds. So this kind of fear is good because morally good, because it will help you to take very righteous decisions. And secondly, there's a fear of reproach from others, you know, the other will blame. Okay, if I steal, will others praise me? No. If I kill someone, will others praise me? No. Others will blame me. And my good name will destroy it, right? So similarly, this fear of others blaming us and scolding us is a good fear because that will constrain you, restrain you from doing anti-social, anti-social and harmful acts towards the society, towards oneself. Then th third fear, this is also very good fear. Third fear is called fear of punishment. So when you're taking decisions, you must definitely check, is this legally right? Is this legally correct? You can do it within the legal frameworks. It's not illegal. So because if you do some illegal things, definitely you get Caught. If you are not get caught, you are lucky. But if you get caught, you have to go to jail, you have to pay fines, you have to sometimes uh, you are got executed by the police or the judiciary. So you have to consider these things as well. That this is the fear of punishment. Then the fourth fear is fear of Dukgati. Dukgati means fear of reborn in bad worlds like hell, animal kingdom, or spirit world, or asura world. These are the four hells uh, described in uh, Buddhist cosmology. So we have to we have to uh, clear 
uh, oneself from all these fears. This, all these fears are really good. That will keep the society run smooth because of these fears. People will not do bad things. And also, you know, nowadays uh, we are using so many filters, right? Because the water is not so pure. Yeah, they are contaminated with chemicals, contaminated with so many particles and other things. What will you do? You use super filters, right? Those super filters have many filters, many layers of filters. One sand layer, maybe some grain layer, some uh, calcium layer, whatever. There are so many layers in uh, modern filters. Why? To remove different, different particles in the water. If you are really top decision maker, you must have good uh, basis for your judgment, for your decision. One is you must look, is it no harm for me? Is it no harm for others? Is my decision will helpful to me? Is my decision is helpful to the society? So you must put, learn to put oneself in another's shoes. If I do this to others, will it harm others or will it help others, whatever? So you must uh, try to uh, look the other people and you must try to understand Taking oneself as example, that's what Buddha says, Aptanam Upamankatta, having taking oneself as example, if somebody wants to do something like this to me, I don't like, so is the others. They don't like to be get harmed, they get uh, hurt. So these are very important. And also there are two other concepts in Buddhist uh, teachings. These are called the hiri and otappa. Hiri is like shame, moral shame to do bad things. And otappa is the moral fear to do bad things. These are called heavenly rules or worldly rules which rule the whole world. So as Buddhists, we sometimes think, okay, about karma, we, we, we decide, okay, this person may have done this bad karma, that person may have done that bad karma, something like that. During the time of the Buddha, there was one uh, devotee called Migasala. And Migasala was explaining uh, to the uh, people about certain people died during the time of the Buddha and they must have born there, they must have born here something like that. Then the Buddha explained, who is Migasala? This Migasala to know the complexity of karma, the human character. Uh, because whoever try to the judge other people, we cannot, we don't know really what is going on other people's mind and what their whole lives, the activities, the karma, bad karma, good karma. Because it's, 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 uh, we cannot, we cannot know the complexity of the human uh, character. And also, we cannot understand the human mind. Therefore, karma is there. It's so complex. As uh, ordinary human beings, we can understand there's bad karma, good karma, and bad karma have bad effects, and good karma have good effects. But we cannot apply these karmic theories and give a prediction about other people. It's, it's, this kind of judgment is, we are not capable of, because our level of 
mind development is not so big not so deep so when we make judgments we need to apply the information evidence and consider the implications what ka, what are the influences and also the listen to the both side buddha says uh, listen to the both sides yeah. this is called in uh, latin audi altram partis one is one of the legal principles in law that if a good judge must listen to the both uh, sides of the story uh then this uh, we need to the finally i would like to wrap up that making decision is inevitable in our life when we make in decisions we must try to see the future and try to do unregrettable things in future try to do unregrettable that you don't feel sorry you don't feel bad when you think look back and when you think back oh i have done such a terrible thing i have done such a nasty thing so when you are doing try to consider will it give me pleasure at this moment happiness at this moment but when you do when you think about this in a late five years 10 years will it going to hurt you re hurt you and you some pain so don't do such things don't take such decisions so if you are looking for good decision impartiality and this kind of scout mindset that you try to find the truth by by trying to find truth doesn't mean that you become foolish or idiot if if you have new facts coming in your mind is open for these new facts like you are your mind is not a, like a hard rock it's closed no no nothing can come new information cannot come okay i have decided finally something cannot be changed this is my decision that kind of uh, stand is not good you must be open minded if the situation change if the conditions change you can you must be able to reconsider do a decision re uh, develop or reshape your decision that will suit the situation that will make more justice more fairness more Uh, good to the yourself and to the society so these are my sharing of uh, this decision this is a very huge topic if you wish to have some uh, questions or some uh, any clarifications please uh, put forward and come forward and uh, you can we can have a discussion about this thank you may the buddha dhamma and sangha bless you and guide you and protect you okay thank yeah. you bande yeah you welcome dhamma talk yeah first of all first of all that maybe uh forget to say uh i have to introduce you your profile uh-huh. something like that uh-huh. so yeah maybe uh-huh. we, we still can share right your uh-huh. profile it's okay yeah, it's uh, i okay. think so you had your data uh-huh. yeah just like mentions in the screen that i think the others can see your profile so like directly <laughs> because i can't I, and then take these things uh to the powerpoint So I think directly just from the email that you sent to me. Uh, yes, uh, maybe the others also uh, can see the qualifications and then the personal qualifications, educational qualifications uh, about you. Yeah, very, very long qualifications. Very nice qualifications. <clears throat> yeah, this is the... the biography of the our today speakers which is the venerable baragama piaratanatero that i known him for 
at least around eight years. Yeah, which is now also for my monkhood is eight years. So it means like new monk at the times I met the Bante, yeah, mm -hmm. especially in Jakarta. I yes, think yes. if not wrong, maybe in Siddhartha, right, Bante? Yes, yes, yes. We have met in Siddhartha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now you are not new monk, you are <laughs> yeah, still, still new monk, but they compare with you. <laughs> yeah, this is professional qualifications, right? And then mm -hmm. the they also have a lot of uh, experience concerning his uh, work for the Buddha Sasana, right? Maybe as all of you uh, seen in the screen. Yeah, wow. So many, yeah, like see working experience, like manager, director, right, and then as a teacher, yeah, very, very good publications, also, why oh, it's very, very good publications, yeah, wow, there is very, very interesting language, Chinese school. Chinese, you can you can speak Chinese language as well, Abante. Ah, ni hao, ni hao. Ni hao, ni Guang Ling for the Suo Fo Fa. There is, I think, in here also, there is someone can speak Chinese in here. Maybe yeah. I, can, I can call her. Mm. Sister Erlin. Oh, okay. Hey, Abante. Hello, uh, I'm good. Nihao. Nihao. Mr. Ellen can speak in, uh, Mandarin very well, Bante. Not really, Bante. So, yeah, any questions, Sister Ellen? Want to ask? Uh, do you have uh, any questions? Yeah. Her name is Jesseline. Jesseline, okay. Yeah, her name is Jesseline. So, hello, Jesseline. Hello. So, can... <laughs> Jesseline yeah. also can speak uh, yeah. Mandarin very well. Oh, good, good. Yeah, so her mom trained her since child. So, I think next and become adult is very very fluent in mandarin mm -hmm. sadu 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 yeah so yeah. Do, we, do we have any uh, questions maybe mm -hmm. the others don't have questions but they maybe i will i will ask concerning the like the current situations right uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh i read many news concerning the uh, present situations concerning with the corona like yeah. you mentioned earlier also there is many many kinds of problem yeah uh, that appear in the our society yeah and uh you see the biggest effect that yeah. happen is in the family yes right and then a lot of uh, a lot of families they don't have they, they lost job they don't have any job right yeah. and they, they can't uh run the family into the normal life hmm. and then uh, some family also they like maybe they decide to do the divorce concerning oh. uh, concerning with the situations Right. Mm -hmm. There is there is news, so many news concerning with that because of the corona, the husbands don't have job, and then yeah. uh, the wife also still like uh what is to do and nothing to do, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, their family is like broke, something like that. Uh-huh. And then in that case, Bante, and then the Buddhism also taught us about uh there is not specific clarifications about uh, merits and divorce mm. right so uh, yeah for that kinds of situations uh, maybe you can suggest maybe you can give kinds of your comment mm. 
Yes, uh, how, you yeah, how to 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 do cadet kinds of thing one day. Yes, uh, it's it's a really challenging time for us, and uh, it is uh, we are wise people, right? Uh, we can think. You know, any situation will not last forever. That is for sure. This will also to pass. This will will also change. Uh, so therefore, uh, we must uh, uh, ready uh, to fight and also take get encouraged. This is the time for us to uh, experiment our perseverance. You know, our energy. Buddha says the virya. You know, energy is very important. Factor of enlightenment, you know. Factor of enlightenment is energy. You know, if you take satta bojanga, the energy is a one very important factor. So this situation, uh, people might uh, lose their confidence because of the economic uh, restraint. And on the other hand, you know that uh, we are people very strange. We are. We cannot accept ourselves, you know. When you are going to work, you are not uh, living with the spouse, you are not living with the children. Now you have given a very good opportunity to spend time with your children. Now you are not happy. Maybe you are fighting with uh, the wife and husband, or children and parents. You cannot uh, accept and enjoy this, uh, you know, good this like a blessing in a way. You have a lot of time to spend with children and the uh, husband and wife and all. So now it is time for us to be creative or develop uh, new products or develop new service, develop new something new. So we must be very creative to come out of this trap because we are trapped in uh, our home in a physically and we are trapped economically. So we are trapped in many ways. So if if you are want to surrender and just inactive, don't do nothing, just accept the situation. It's not good. This is not good. This is not the right way for Buddhists. You know, Buddha always, when he was a bodhisattva, also he when he has a problem. He always try to overcome the obstacles and the problems any time he has. So we must have a courage. We must have a wisdom. We must try to get rid of, get out of this trap. So we must develop the virya. We must develop the wisdom. Virya and wisdom too together. We can overcome these problems and also. When you are living with the house, sometimes the tension build up, the stress build up. We try to meditate, try to do some yoga, try to do some activities, so that your stress level will not go. Because when you are, for men especially, their mentality, their evolution is that men want to go out. That's the, their life is like going outwards. Wife's life is normally stuck in the house and do household things, but men, when the men are caught, like they are like in prison, in prison is difficult for them. So they have to understand and have a timetable and create some activities within the house, doing some dancing, doing some yoga, doing some exercises, and also at the same time thinking to do something new. Uh, online things or learning new skills from the internet. There are, I know one person in Sri Lanka, uh, now they cannot go to job and they are learning uh, Photoshop through the internet, through YouTube. You can learn language, you can learn uh, cookings and uh, building repairing, anything and everything, you know, in the internet, everything is there. You can uh, learn. Uh, so, it is uh, very important to uh, learn new skill and uh, learn new methods of earning. 
even you lost your job maybe you can try some new things to do making new food and packet them and sell them or some kind of uh, things uh, even brand new things you can become inventor and find some uh, new things and uh, overcome the problems so you can look at this uh, corona virus as a like pessimistic very negative way and it's like uh, something destroying our life or you can see this uh, situation as an opportunity to grow opportunity to develop opportunity to uh, invent invent new things so it's how you you change your attitude is the most important hello yes thank you bante for your yeah. answer yeah so, you're welcome so because of this pandemic also if there is no pandemic like these kinds of situations we can't meet each other right mm. <laughs> which yeah. is like now you are in sri lanka with even like i'm in sri lanka which is the others also is from indonesia and then yeah. other parts of the world yeah so because of that also we can meet and then we can still learn yeah. and hear about the teachings of the buddha yeah and also I think there is a uh, put like you uh, are just giving the lines, right? Which is like if we have kinds of problem, first of all, maybe we should like have effort, right? Effort, wiria, yeah, as well as wisdom, and then uh, maybe uh, is it maybe combines with the uh, patience also, Bante? Kanti? Yes, yes, Kanti. Yeah, because when you are living together, sometimes you have fightings and disagreements with, because when you are not living together very often because you go to the office and come in the evening, eat something and sleep. So not that, that much interaction because you are not at home. But now you are at home all 24 hours. So, so that makes uh, more confrontations and uh, more arguments, more quarrels sometimes. So, as to balance and have kanti, you know, the patience. That's very important. So, yeah, so uh, there is a lot of time meet each other and know each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, there is one participant who just raised hand, Bante. So yes, please. Yeah. Can, uh, let her. Okay, please. Yes. Jessica. On the me when they just yes, Jessica. Yeah. Um, I want to ask. Um, in making decisions, sometimes uh in our life, uh, uh, we have things like um traumatic past experience. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 so many times it is in our subconscious level. Yeah. So it's kind of even more hard harder to uh, overcome or to to accept uh, what had been uh, done in the past in uh, in conscious level uh, we try our best and we feel like we have already accept things you know but in our subconscious level it's it's hard because it's 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 deep down inside um, so um, I would like to ask whether uh, in making decision in whatever aspect, so many times uh, realizing it or not realizing it, it's best on what's the subconscious level also. So I would like to ask you, uh, uh, maybe like a guidance for us, uh, if we have some traumatic experience in the past, how, how would we know that our decision is wise for us and for other people and how, how is our decision is not best on the fear of the past? Thank you, Bente. Yeah, uh, no matter how, uh, you know, the past is there, we, we cannot uh, ignore it. But uh, only thing is how we can, uh, how we react to it, you know, how we respond to these past events. Uh, so one uh, basic thing is that uh, we, 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 we have to, change our subconscious, we have to change our way of uh, uh, seeing this problem 
in a different way you know same problem you can see in a different angle for example if you look from uh, ground on the ground towards mountain angle is different and if you are looking from mountain to ground the, the low level is uh, angle is different and the view is different so we need to change uh, personally that uh, okay let's say uh, some boyfriend or some girlfriend do some nasty thing to another girlfriend or boyfriend and that cause a deep hurt in their heart you know the deep, deep wound in their heart so we need to understand this all human beings are imperfect you know they are not perfect and uh, we have lot of kilesa you know defilements and sometimes people they are overpowered you know overtaken by the defilements and kilesas they do something very nasty terrible and because of that you hurt right right this is called first error this is the first error because he hurt you right the second error that now you are already suffering because of this first error it's her it's injured you know he shoot you injured now yourself based on this first error you think again again and again and again it's like a circle going round and round the same thought you remembering remembering it recollecting it reflecting it and hurt yourself so we must be clever enough we must be wise enough to see these are human faults you know we have to firstly forgive the humanness human is not a perfect one humanness is lot of faults lot of shortcomings not perfect so human we also we should not expect okay this person i treat like this this person treat me like that you know this kind of expectation when you when you expect this kind of expectation and other side don't do don't fulfill your expectation there there will be you know hurts firstly see the imperfection of the human being secondly you must forgive for shortcomings thirdly you must think that the past is past no matter how much you worry no matter how much you are sad no matter how much you are upset you cannot go to the yesterday and correct it can you we cannot right we cannot go to the past and correct it so only solution to the past is to forgive it right try to forgive slowly 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 forgive because whatever he do bad he will get its karma we we, we don't need to worry you know karma will uh, teach him the lesson as karma ripen get more and so we don't need to rehurt again and again like the second third arrow by ourselves in our mind because we have hurt already by the first arrow don't create second third fourth fifth sixth arrows so that way forgiving is very important part of uh, healing this traumatic experience and also now if you have this kind of thoughts again and again you must redirect your thoughts to some other things not to the same thing because you can change the environment you can change your hobbies or uh, start new things new challenges new studies so that your energy is not focused on this traumatic experience you are not investing you know you can invest your time in this traumatic experience which will not give you any return you know and you can invest that valuable your youth valuable your time to something useful something uh, fruitful something which will bring you some benefits 
so that way you can avoid uh, this kind of uh, you know negative traumatic and very painful experiences the healing can happen healing can happen if you start to letting go little by little like the goldsmith remove the dust or the dirty things in the goal your heart will shine right like the goal so let uh, uh, try to letting go a little by little that way we can uh, forgive and forget this bad experience and also you can uh, think good things again and again then you don't need to pay attention to these bad things you know every day you try to write and count the blessings of your life that way you can uh, pay more attention to the good side of your life hope i <laughs> answer your questions yeah oh good day is it clear sis jessica <laughs> Yes, very much clear and so much wisdom. It's a good reminder. Thank you, Wende. Ah, you're welcome. Is that the one you translate from my other Dhamma talk on Samakida? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm the same Jessica. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that is very, very, very interesting questions that are uh, given by the sis Jessica. Uh, yeah all of us also there is a lot of things that happen right as a humans we have a lot of experience concerning our life which is like the experience those experiences also in fact for us to make uh, the decisions for further step right in our life so yeah that's one also is happens maybe i can share about my experience also first of all like bante said they really like it go and then very important also forgive ourselves right because as a human maybe also we have a lot of lack like bante said right it's very very interesting it's very good okay uh, there is another questions maybe can uh, share want to ask with the others if not Maybe Bante, please could you lead us to share the merits Bante by listening this Dharma talk? Okay, Bante. yeah. Uh, and I do some blessings and uh, sharing merits to devas. Akasatta cha bhumata deva naga maithika punyantang anumo ditwa chirangva kantu sasana akasatha cha bhumata deva naga maithika punyantang anumo ditwa chirangva kantu desana akasatha cha bhumata deva naga maithika Punyantang anumo ditwa chirang vakam tu tang sadati tabitiyo vivajantu saparoko vinasatu mate bhavatvantarayo suki diga yuko bhava bhavatu sabha mangalang vakam tu sabha devata Sab buddha nubhavin, sab dhamma nubhavin, sab sangha nubhavin, sada suti bhavam suti. May the buddha dhamma and sangha guide you, protect you and bless you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So yeah, before we all leave, 